Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, I wanted to read you a few books about something that I used to love to teach about in my classroom. Can you guess what I want to read about today? Did you guys say trains? That's right, trains. Look, there's a train. This is the little engine that could. This is a steam train. And on my little table here, I have some other kinds of trains. I have this train. This could be a diesel train. I have an itty bitty little steam train. And then I have something else that I think is really cool. You see that? This is a railway spike. It is a giant nail that they used to hammer in the rails to the big pieces of wood that hold the rails down so that a train can ride along the tracks. Well, we're going to be learning all about different things that involve trains in our book today called C is for Caboose. That's what's right there, a caboose, riding the rails from A to Z. Well, since we're riding the rails, we better get ready. And what better way to be ready than with my Mickey Mouse conductor hat. All right, here we go. All aboard. C is for caboose, riding the rails from A to Z. Look at all those train tracks. There's a caboose. A, all aboard. The train is leaving the station. This guy is the conductor and he's calling everybody onto the train. B. Boxcar. A train car shaped like a box that carries things like grain, airplane parts, and clothing. B could also be for bullet train. A group of super fast trains invented in Japan. Look how slick that one is. Looks like it could go very, very fast. B could also be for big boys. The largest steam locomotives ever built. C. C for caboose, the last car of a freight train. Or circus train. Here comes a circus train. A train that carries circus animals, performers, and equipment. D. D for depot, a building where trains stop to be loaded and unloaded. D for dining car. A train's restaurant. Look at that. A whole restaurant on the train. And there's a waiter. E for engineer. The person who drives the train. There's the engineer. E could also be for engine. The part of the train that gives it power. So without this engine and without the engineer, could the train go anywhere? No. F. F for Flying Scotsman, a passenger train that has run between London, England and Edinburgh, Scotland since 1862. That's a long time. F could also be for fair. See, here's a poster for the fair in Chicago, the World's Fair. The 1933 World's Fair in Chicago, Illinois, where people saw exciting new trains. G, there's a G, for Golden Spike, used to celebrate the completion of the first railroad to go all the way across the United States. A golden one. Remember the railroad spike I was holding up? Yeah, it's the giant nail. G is also for George Pullman, whose company in the 1800s became famous for building fancy railroad cars for people to sleep in. Boy, do you think... He li lived recently. That looks like an awful old photo. Look how long his beard is. H. H is for hand car. Look at that. That man and that dog are riding on a hand car. Hand cars were used to inspect the railroad tracks, so they'd actually have to pump it. See, he has a little handle. He would ride it like a bicycle pedal, or he could pump it to make it run along. H for hospital train. 
a hospital on wheels first used to care for soldiers during the American Civil War. So look, they can use trains for all kinds of things. They can have restaurant cars, they can have hospital cars. I see a nurse and I see a lot of beds where people could be helped and treated. I, I is for immigrants, people from all over the world, especially Ireland and China, who helped build American railroads. See, all these people, they worked a long time ago and it took a lot of people to build the train tracks all the way across our very, very large nation. I is also for Iron Horse, a nickname for trains, because before trains, horses were the fastest way to travel. Do you guys ride horses? I bet you don't. You probably take a car. J. J is for Junction, a place where two or more railroad tracks cross. See how they're crossing each other? That's called a junction. J is also for this guy, John Henry, a folk hero who hammered a train tunnel through a mountain faster than a machine. So look, he used that heavy sledgehammer to go right through the side of a mountain, even faster than a machine could do it. K. K is for King's Cross. This is King's Cross up here. A large train station in London, England. See the trains? Kind of looks like a foggy picture. I see lots of people on the platform. K is also for knuckle coupler that connects the cars of the train. So these still exist. So this is what trains connect by. It's called a knuckle coupler. See how they come loose and then they, when they click together, it holds the cars in place so it can pull the train along. L, L is for locomotive. Look at this long locomotive. The name for the train's engine and the part of the train that pushes or pulls the cars. This is a pretty fancy one. Look how sleek it is. It's very shiny. That's really cool. And it's huge too, actually, because this is the boiler of the train. That's the part that makes all the heat that creates the steam that drives the drive shaft that makes the wheels spin and drives the train. This is a big, big one. So I think it can probably pull quite a lot of weight. M, M, 10,000, a fancy lightweight Union Pacific Railroad train that first appeared in the 1930s. Oh, look at that guy. He also looks very fast. He kind of reminds me a little bit of a worm. What does he remind you of? M is also for monorail, a train that runs on a single track. Look at that, it's up in the sky. You guys might have gone on a monorail if you've ever gone to Disneyland. Disneyland has a monorail train that goes around it. N. N is for newspaper that some people read while riding the train. That guy has a newspaper. I can see the headline. N is also for night train. A train that runs at night and usually has cars for people to sleep in. You can even sleep in a train. Oh. O for open top hopper, a freight car with no roof that has openings underneath called hoppers for unloading freight. So look at that. So they can put stuff in the top here and then there's holes on the bottom and they open those up and everything that's in there falls back out. O is also for oil, used to keep a train running smoothly. Yeah, our train has a lot of parts. And see, this engineer, he's oiling it. He has to make sure all those parts stay functional by keeping them oiled and in good repair. P. P is for piggyback. Oh, that's what this one's doing up here. To carry a truck trailer on the back of a flat train car, like a piggyback ride. See, that's a truck trailer. So a truck would normally pull that, but they put it on top of a train car and now it's being driven by a train. P is also for poster. This one advertised the Union Pacific Railway. It says the Union Pacific Railway through Kansas and Nebraska to the Rockies and beyond. The Rockies are mountains. Look, I see a deer. And look at those mountains. That's pretty cool. Q. Q is for quick. Before there were airplanes, trains were the fastest way to travel. So if you wanted to get somewhere really quick, you took a train. And look, there's a little pocket watch. 
I think they might put a pocket watch there to show that time. It didn't take a lot of time, but also because if you were a conductor, you had to make sure your train stayed on time. So conductors always had to watch the clock to make sure their train stopped and started right on time. R. R is for route, a path a train takes from here to there. And look, here's a map. So a train has a very specific place it can go, right? Because it has to be on a train track. So the route is the way the train track goes. So you know exactly where the train is going to go because it's not like it could jump off the tracks and go off on its own. R is also for roller coaster, a train that sometimes does loop-de-loops. Look, it goes whoo. Have you guys ever been on a roller coaster? Pretty fun. You go tick, 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 Wee. S. S is for school car. A traveling train car set up like a classroom for students who don't have schools in their hometown. Look, at one point, they even had classrooms on train cars. Is there anything you couldn't put in a train car? Look at them. They're sitting at desks. And there's the teacher. He's teaching them things. It looks like they're reading and they're writing. T, T for tunnel, a passageway built through a mountain. T is also for ticket, for a seat on the train. So in order to go on a train, you need to get a ticket, right? T is also for trolley, a streetcar that is powered by electricity and runs on rails. So it's like an itty bitty train. U, U is for Union Pacific Rail Railroad Company, the largest railroad system in the United States. There's this Union specific, specific, Union Pacific, excuse me, Overland, the route. Look at that, all those trains. U is also for Underground, the name for the subway in London, England. So a subway is a train that runs underground. V, this is a fun word. V is for a Velocipede. That's a fun one. That's a velocipede right there. Used to look for trouble on the railroad, railroad track. So the velocipede is almost like that pump car we saw a little while ago where the guy had to kind of pedal it out. So they rode on little um, things so they could go check that the track was right because if the track had any brakes or problems, that could really be an issue if the train hit them, right? They could even derail the train. That means the train comes off the tracks. That'd be bad. W. W is for whistle. You can go, whoo, whoo. That's what that whistle's doing. A whistle. Engineers use it to warn people and talk to other train workers. So it tells people the train is coming. You know what else a train has to tell people it's coming? A bell. The bell goes ding, 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 ding. X. X stands for crossing, a place where the trains cross roads or sidewalks. So you might see this when you're driving around and you cross over railroad tracks. Wherever a railroad track crosses a road, they put this. That means they're crossing each other. So it means you also have to be very, very careful. Because if you look here, it says, stop, listen, look. Do not cross after train passes until you're sure the train is approaching on any track. So you don't want to be on the tracks when a train's coming. Why? Yard, a place where train cars are stored and repaired. Look at this train yard, it's huge. These are all trains. They're all stacked up next to each other. That's a lot of tracks. So all are kept in the train yard, but then they will drive out the end of the train yard onto the tracks. Why is also for Yosemite Valley Railroad, a small California railroad that ran to Yosemite National Park. So Yosemite is a great national park right here in our state of California. If you haven't been there, it's a lot of fun. Z, the last letter in the alphabet, for Zephyr, a group of sleek Burlington Railroad trains that first appeared at the 1936, 1936, 1933, 1934 World's Fair in Chicago. So these are called Zephyr cars. They're very sleek and shiny and metal, but they're kind of silver instead of black, right? So they're Zephyr cars. Oh, this is Im image credit. So all the special pictures in our book came from different places. So they're giving them credits. Oh, that's it. Bum, 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 ba -dum, bum, boop. That was a lot of great information. 
boy, that was a pretty good book. From all aboard to a Zephyr engine. So many different things. Well, two things that really stood out to me was number one, the circus train. I always like a circus train. And number two was John Henry. John Henry is a great American folk legend and hero. If you don't know much about him and you just heard about him here in this book, I suggest you go find out more about his special legend. It's a pretty cool one. Well, I hope you enjoyed this book and I'll see you next time.